This video is going to be all about starting the Appalachian Trail at the southern terminus. I want to go over everything that you can kind of expect that first day on trail, a couple different options, so whether you do the approach trail or not. I went through this whole experience twice when I attempted the Appalachian Trail in 2020 and then again when I threw hiked in 2021. So I've gone through it a couple times and hopefully if I can kind of just explain everything, maybe that's one less thing that you have to worry about for your through hike. So the southern terminus of the Appalachian Trail is on the summit of Springer Mountain and there's two places that hikers typically start their through hikes. It's either at Amicola State Park, at the Visitor Center, or at the Springer Mountain Trailhead. Now these places aren't really that easy to get to. They're kind of in the middle of nowhere. So if you're flying into Georgia, if you're taking the train in, I feel like the most common way to get to the start is to take a shuttle. I personally haven't experienced the shuttle because both times I went, I was dropped off by family members, which was really convenient, but I know a lot of people don't have that luxury. If you're looking for a shuttle driver to bring you to either of these places, I've noticed that you can find a lot of different shuttle drivers on either the Far Out app or on Facebook Appalachian Trail groups. Uh, there's a lot of comments about this subject, so if you do a quick search, you'll find a whole list of shuttle drivers. Both times I started the Appalachian Trail, I started at Amicalola Falls State Park. So you're going to drive into the state park and you're going to see a visitor center. And so you can park your car there or get dropped off however you get there. And there's going to be kind of signs directing you where to go. It's gonna say, AT hikers, go this way. The first time I went, it was in March, and they had different presentations for through hikers. So I remember sitting through a leave no trace presentation, a how to hang your bear bag presentation. There's going to be volunteers there and ridge runners, and they're going to answer all your questions and just be super helpful starting out. So if you have any kind of concerns, there's gonna be people there to help you. There's also going to be a spot at the visitor center to sign in. Now you can kind of like register your hike ahead of time on a website. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I will link it below. Registering for your through hike isn't mandatory like it is for like the PCT when you have to get permits. It just kind of gives them an idea of how many hikers are going to be starting on each day. And it's a way for them to have your information. That way, if anything were to happen, they can contact you. If a shelter closes, if a part of the trail gets rerouted, they have your email, they have your phone number, and they can text and send messages. I got a couple messages on my through hike about different places that were closed. Um, a fire, I think, in, at one point. And obviously in 2020, when they were trying to tell all the hikers to get off trail, I got an email for that. So some people won't register, but I find it helpful. It's kind of like a why not situation. So you can register online ahead of time, or I think you can register when you get there. Uh, you're gonna sign in. They're gonna give you a hiker tag. It's just kind of this little piece of plastic that hangs off the back of your backpack. I really like having this. It kind of just, shows that I'm a through hiker and if you run into other people on trail and they have the hiker tag you know that they're through hiking the AT or section hiking or something and it just kind of makes me feel like I'm part of the community. Also at this visitor center is the arch. So you've probably seen the arch in a lot of photographs. This is where a lot of hikers will take their picture starting out on the AT because it's kind of a better photo op than the summit of Springer Mountain itself. The arch is going to be the beginning of the approach trail. So it's going to be an eight or nine mile trail from the visitor center to the summit of Springer Mountain where the Appalachian Trail officially begins. So these eight miles aren't part of the AT, but it's a way to get to the beginning of the AT. The first mile of the approach trail is what a lot of hikers talk about as being the difficult section. It's a giant staircase that goes up Amicalola Falls, which is the largest waterfall in Georgia. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Yes, it's a lot of steps, but I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, you're about to walk 2,000 miles. It's just a little warm up for that. After the first mile of the approach trail, once you're done with all the stairs, you're going to pass by the Amicalola Lodge. This is a big hotel. It's really nice. I stayed there before I started my 2021 through hike. 
there's a really nice restaurant, they serve breakfast, lunch, dinner, there's an amazing view, and I really enjoyed my stay there. A lot of hikers will stay at this lodge the night before they start their hike. So if you do choose to stay at this lodge the night before you start your hike, you can actually do everything that I just mentioned the day that you check in, which I recommend doing. So you can drive to the visitor center, you can sign in, you can go through the presentations, take your photo at the arch, you can hike up the first mile of the staircase uh, going up the falls and then you can stay at the lodge. That way, the next morning, you can eat breakfast at the lodge and you don't have to kind of worry about all that logistical stuff. You can just leave the lodge and continue on the approach trail going up Springer Mountain. So the trail from Amakalula Lodge to Springer Mountain, it's gonna be seven or eight miles and it's really not that memorable. It's kind of a boring section of trail. The first mile of the approach trail is really where all the action's happening and the people take the photos and have the fun. So just keep that in mind. Once you leave the lodge and go to Springer, it's a little boring. If you don't wanna hike all eight miles of the approach trail because maybe you got a later start in the day or maybe you're trying to work yourself up to getting bigger miles, there are plenty of campsites on the approach trail. So you don't have to do the whole thing in one day. On the top of Springer Mountain, you're gonna see a plaque that kind of symbolizes the southern terminus of the Appalachian Trail. You're going to see the first white blaze, which you're going to follow all the way to Katahdin if you do the whole thing. And you're gonna see a little bit of a view. It's nothing extravagant, but there is a little lookout. Pretty close to the summit of Springer Mountain is Springer Mountain Campsite. So that's gonna be a place where you can camp that night. There's a shelter, there's plenty of places to set up your tent or your hammock. There's going to be a privy, a water source, places to put your food overnight. And in my experience, there's ridge runners there that will kind of answer your questions and help you get settled in and kind of ask you how your first day went. If you're not quite ready to camp on the summit of Springer Mountain, if it's a little too early in the day, there is another campsite only 2.8 miles down the trail. So that's an option too. So like I said, the eight or nine miles from the visitor center to the summit of Springer Mountain is not officially the Appalachian Trail. It's called the Approach Trail. And honestly, you don't even have to do it. You can actually drive to the Springer Mountain Trailhead which is technically mile one of the Appalachian Trail, and you can backtrack the one mile to the summit of Springer Mountain, start there, and then continue on your hike. Now, there's a lot of people that don't feel like the approach trail is necessary, and they will rather just start at the Springer Mountain Trailhead. I personally think it's a little boring. I really enjoy going to the visitor center, doing the approach trail, experiencing the falls and the lodge, and just doing that approach trail. I felt like if I didn't do the approach trail, I would kind of regret it. And like a lot of hikers say, when you're done with your through hike, you're gonna wish you had another day on trail. You're gonna miss it. If you start the Springer Mountain Trailhead and hike one mile to the summit of Springer Mountain, you can of course camp there, but there's a lot of other options you can camp at the Strover Creek campsite and that will be a three mile day. You can st camp at Hawk Mountain Shelter that's going to be a nine mile day. Or I've never been to this campsite, it's called Devil's Kitchen and if you camp there that would be a 15 mile day. But I definitely don't recommend hiking too much on the first day. That's a mistake that a lot of hikers make. You want to start with small mileage and then gradually work your way up. Now there is kind of an in-between option where you kind of get the best of both worlds. You can go to the visitor center, sign in, get your hiker tag, go through the presentations, take your picture at the arch, hike the falls if you want to, and then you can drive around to the Springer Mountain Trailhead and only do the one mile to the top of Springer Mountain. That way you save about seven or eight miles. But keep in mind that the Springer Mountain Trailhead is an hour drive from the visitor center. So if you're paying for a shuttle to drive you to the Springer Mountain Trailhead, it's going to be further and therefore more expensive. I did read somewhere that the visitor center is under construction until spring of 2023. I'm not exactly sure when it will be done, but I think all of the services are still available. It's just under construction. <laughs> There's definitely a lot of pros and cons to both ways of starting out the AT. I did the approach trail twice and I had a great experience. If for some reason I had to do it a third time, I might skip it 
just because I've experienced it twice. I know what it's like. And if I do it again, I'd rather just get to Springer Mountain and start my through hike. But I would stop at the visitor center to sign in and get a hiker tag because those hiker tags are important to me. And I have both of mine hanging up on my wall at home. There's going to be so many different emotions going on the first day of your hike. So if you're feeling overwhelmed this first day, there's a lot of people that are there to help you. The ridge runners, the volunteers at the visitor center. It's going to be weird. It's going to be weird, especially if like you're saying goodbyes like I did going from being with your family and your loved ones to like the next second being on the trail by yourself, kind of like isolated from the world. It's a little bit of an adjustment, but I got adjusted to the through hiking life a lot quicker than I thought. So if you're nervous, just get on trail, find a routine, find the rhythm, really just enjoy every moment have a positive outlook and I know you will have the time of your life. If there's anything I missed about what you can expect your first day on the trail doing the approach trail or starting at Springer Mountain, please let me know in the comments. That way the Appalachian Trail class of 2023 can read the comments or if people are still watching this video years down the road, um, people can learn from this video and in the comments. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.